All right, welcome everyone to Changemaker TV. Really excited to have everyone here again and um, our beautiful guest today, Justine Suatala. We're really excited to have you here, babe. Thanks for joining. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. Um, so Justine and I met, we've known each other for, oh, I don't know, moons ago it feels like now, um, but through Les Mills and um, it's been so exciting to see your journey through the other side now and creating your own business and that's what I'm really excited to hear about and for everyone who's listening to also hear a little bit more about your journey and building your business and the growth and you know the personal stuff that you've been through with that yeah definitely so just to give you a little bit of background about Justine she's the owner and creator of fit healthy mums and um, she's also a certified personal trainer female body transformation specialist TV and radio presenter global health and fitness influencer and pre and postnatal expert and also an ambassador for Oxygen Magazine and a cover girl. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Um, but yeah, she's got, you know, wealth of knowledge in the fitness, you know, the health and fitness industry and obviously loads and loads of experience and very passionate and that shines through, you know, everything that you do, but very passionate about obviously educating and working and inspiring women uh, to be physically and also mentally strong. Um, so tell us, tell us a little bit about your journey, where you started and, and to where you are today. Yeah, wow. Okay. So it's been a long journey, like it's been 12 years in the making. So, you know, it's not an overnight sort of success story and nothing ever is. And I think that's what people <laughs> don't realize. Um, I used to actually be a dental nurse uh, and I moved to Australia after London and just was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't stand this. And um, I was doing the nine to five grind, working with someone else. And I was just like, you know, growing up uh, through my high school and after high school, I was always into um, sport and dancing and stuff. So I knew I had a passion for exercise and, and fitness. So um, I moved to Melbourne and decided to do my Cert 3 and Cert 4 and started out in Melbourne, you know, uh, selling memberships at a gym and then uh, on reception and then I did my body attack training because <laughs> uh, I loved body attack and uh, and then I guess from there I, I loved body attack and started teaching body attack and then I um, started doing personal training and my RPM training and it all kind of just evolved so I definitely it was you know a, a step process and um and then uh, it was about, I think it was 2007, actually, I went over to Thailand to do a detox. And uh, before that, I guess I'd been through some major life changes and uh, I was feeling pretty lost. I was in the industry and I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do or the direction I was taking. I knew that I had a passion and that's what I wanted to do. So I went over to Thailand for seven days on my own and did this detox. And uh, when I got back, I was feeling really great because obviously after a sort of detox process, my body was um, healthy. My mind was like clear and I was like, okay. And I was walking through a gym and one of the trainers just said, hey, Jazz, why don't you jump up on stage and do like a sports model comp? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Sounds fun, you know, yeah. like, uh, and then three months later, I jumped up and did my first show. And yeah, and back then it wasn't anywhere near as competitive as it is today. Uh, I think there was only like five or six girls on stage in my first show. Now you get like 50 girls in one sort of division. But, um, and then I did a couple of years of competing, which I did for fun. I loved it. I had a ball and it kind of just, I guess, it put my face out there in regards to, um, you know, I guess more sort of um, yeah more exposure and um, and then that's when I got my first oxygen magazine cover and so it just kind of snowballed from there and I guess I'm kind of like you in a way that when I start doing something I like to be really good at it and I like to not be the best uh, like in a competitive way but just be the best that I can be at it because yeah. I am so passionate about it so say same with the Les Mills stuff that evolved into me becoming a presenter trainer for RPM and CX Works and Body Attack and uh, and that was you know that was a part of my life for eight eight years yeah. almost so um, so yeah and then uh, and then the competing and then it's just yeah it's all evolved and from there I suppose until I got pregnant and then obviously I couldn't stay working uh, in the gyms and stuff anymore and that's when I decided to create my online hub for healthy mums. And I did that in the first six months of my son, well, after my son was born. Uh, and that wasn't easy. I look back now and I'm like, how the hell did I do that with a newborn? Yeah, <laughs> that's something to be acknowledged for, that's for sure. Oh, um, I, I, yeah, I, I don't even know where that drive come from because he wasn't an easy baby. He was not a good sleeper. He was a screamer. 
um, and we didn't have any family here. So, you know, it was kind of just me and, and Matt. And um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a very challenging time, but I just had this vision and I know that there was a big hole in the market for um, women get, being given the right advice uh, pre and postnatal because there's so much out there that um, can actually, you know, set women back after they've had a baby. So I worked with a physio and a nutritionist and I spent so much money and time and effort and energy into making sure that it was safe and effective. And that's why it took six months. It wasn't just something I, you know, created overnight. So, and then after that, I guess it's just, that's, that's become my passion. That's my niche now working with mums and, and women now as well. That's evolved from um, just being an online program. Now I've um, evolved it into a coaching program, my mind body overhaul. So that's where I, I work with uh, 20 women every sort of eight, 10 weeks and I coach them. I don't just give them, you know, their program. I actually work Work with them through webinars, live streams, phone calls. I program their nutrition so it's personalized. I program their training more so it's personalized and they get me holding their hand through the whole process. But it, it's such a, that to me is just so much more rewarding because you're working with them mentally and emotionally and hearing them say that they can overcome emotional eating, that they're more confident, that they like having their photo taken now, that they, you know, like they just, just all the things that they say after they've been through the program are like, that's what gets me excited. It's because that stuff is, you know, I want women to feel empowered and happy and, and content within themselves. And I just think these days there's so many women out there that are just rushing around and they're not actually physically in their bodies. They're just so stressed out. You know, they've got this to do, the, that to do, the to-do list are like, you know, so long and they feel all this pressure and anxiety from, from themselves as well as, you know, everyone around them to be everything and do everything. And it's like, yeah. you just around and you get lost in it so uh you know that's that's where I step in and I give them that support and I guess the confidence to know it's okay to put themselves first and to work on themselves so that all that other noise outside can happen and it doesn't affect them the way it used to yeah yeah awesome love it love it <laughs> um I think yeah you know I can relate to that as well you know just being in the fitness industry for so long and seeing how you know, at the end of the day, it comes back to what you think, you know, what you think about yourself, that, that body mind connection is extremely powerful. And as you know, as well, being a mum, that's a huge, there's a huge mental battle that's going on during pregnancy and, and, and after pregnancy to cope with this, the physical changes of our body, not yeah. only the pressures of everything that's going on, but yeah, being able to kind of adapt to those changes. Absolutely. You know, there's so many women out there that do struggle in silence and that's why food uh, becomes their way of suppressing their emotions and it becomes their friend and enemy at the same time. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they use it to suppress the feelings and then they feel guilty that they're, you know, um, eating the bad food and stuff. And, uh, and, and that's why, you know, just, you know, I guess social media plays a huge part in that as well because we're all sitting back looking at our beautiful Instagram feeds and all the nice, gorgeous photos and perfect lives. <laughs> yeah. but um you know like for me I, I see stuff and I and I think oh that's great but I don't look at them and go I, I want I wish I looked like that or I wish I had that life or you know like relationship goals and couple goals and body goals you see all these people hashtagging all the stuff and it's like no you, you can't look at someone else's life or who who they are or you know and try and be that because that just that that's creating a false hope and uh and then you're not going to be able to be your best because you're focusing on trying to be like someone else, you know, and try to look yeah. like someone else. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, actually. I love, I love that as something to kind of put out there that, yeah, we're all individual, we're all unique, and we don't need to be like anybody else. It's, you know, creating your own pathway. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, we're all different shapes and sizes. We can't physically look like someone else. I, I, I say it's always great to have motivation and look at pictures and go, wow, you know, I'd love to be that strong and then work towards being, you know, as strong as you can be in the gym or fit or whatever. But taking away the kind of um, the body goals as such as, you know, I want to look like that and I, and I need to look like that and it creates this yeah, the anxiety around it and, and not doing the work internally so that you're actually, when you do get to a, a stage where you're, you're at your goal weight, but then you look in the mirror and you're still going, oh, my bum's big and my this and that. And you're still tearing yourself apart because you just tried to fix the problem with training and diet without doing the mindset sort of work with it and the self-love and self-acceptance and, uh, and getting rid of all the self-doubt and the negative self-talk that a lot of people 
live, live you know day to day with this constant noise in their head of you're not good enough you're not good enough you're fat you're ugly you know like it saddens me that there's people out there that can you know live their lives like that but you know and, it, and it's an internal battle it's not something they want to share with people because they're embarrassed about it so yeah yeah so tell us a little bit a little bit about your own kind of mindset challenges that, that you've been through in your own journey because I'm, I'm sure you're a lot like the rest of us and yeah, have definitely. faced your own. I guess for me, it's always, I've always had this uh, fear of not being liked. For me, uh, growing up, you know, it's always like I've always tried. I, I'm one of those, I'm a people pleaser. I, I like people to like me. And if they don't like me, I need to know why. And I need to try and turn their, you know, mindset around. I'm like, I'm a nice person. You should like me. Sort of thing. <laughs> Not that I would say that to them, but I, no. I would overdo it to make sure that they would realize that I was a nice person and then they still wouldn't. And I'd be like really hurt and offended because I'm like, oh, you know, I know I'm a nice person, but I'm so hypersensitive to that. Uh, and I think that's been the biggest lesson for me is to, to try and step away from, you know, you can't control what other people think or say or feel about you. And, you know, no one's perfect. And yes, we've all made mistakes and done stupid things in the past or whatever. And it, it can come back to haunt you. But at the end of the day, if people aren't going to accept you for everything, you know, not just the good bits, but they've got to accept you for the, the, the shit that you go through and the stupid shit that you do as well, yeah. um, then, then they're worth letting go of. And I think, um, yeah, so that's been one of my big challenges is, is really accepting that not everyone will like me. And especially with, you know, being in the public eye, uh, I, I, it kind of crushed my self-confidence, um, especially after having Leo, because I think I felt all this pressure to be, you know, the perfect mom and, and um, not really share everything. I'm not much of an overshare anyway, because I, I, I believe that, you know, I've got to keep something for myself and, and I, I like to keep, you know, a, a lot of my life private. Uh, but yeah, I, I went through a massive challenge and I, and I still do to this day, I think sometimes just with juggling everything and, you know, am I spending enough time with Leo? Am I giving my clients what they need? Am I, uh, you know, am, am I enough? Am I doing that well enough? And, um, you know, but I guess for me now, I just have to look at what I've created and, um, you know, look at how happy Leo is and go, oh, no, he's loved. Like he's, he's, he's you know, he, I don't need to worry about that, but you do, you can't help it. And I guess um, self-acceptance with my body post-baby, uh, you know, that, that for me, pregnancy really woke me up to, I think before I got pregnant, I was on this sort of like solo selfish mission and I could train twice a day and I could spend hours in the gym if I wanted to because I was only living my life for me. Right. Uh, and as I got pregnant, I was like, it was like this breath of fresh air. I was just like, ah, oh, thank God I can relax. Cause I think I just, I just got myself to this stage where I didn't even realize I was just like, you know, I'm trying to keep up with the Joneses and all these super lean fitness models on Facebook and Instagram. And I was like, oh, you know, and I didn't really give myself the space to step away from that until I got pregnant. And then after I had Leo, I, I just, I don't know, my whole mindset shifted. I just realized what was important, um, that there was no rush to get my body back to the stage that it was. And I took my time and I really wanted to lead by example. I didn't want to be one of these ladies that showed their abs only after that had it, um, had their baby. You know, I showed after I had Leo four days and I, I still looked pregnant and, uh, you know, showed everyone that I had abdominal separation and I showed them that, um, you know, I was inflamed and I just looked like utter crap and I hadn't slept for four days, you know, like, um, because that's the real stuff. That's what people want to see, I guess, to know that, you know, that's, that's just what it's like after you've had a baby. And, um, and yeah, and you know, it, it, it's, for me, it was just a slow burner. I had less time, but when I went to the gym, I really enjoyed it and I made the most of it because it was me, me time. Um, yeah. And you would understand that. How good is it when you get to the gym and you've got an hour to yourself? And I really just started to focus on being stronger and fitter rather than how I looked. Uh, and, and needless to say, I'm the fittest and strongest and healthiest I've ever been. And I'm 37 and I'm a mum. you know, previous to that, I, I would say I was overtraining, I was under eating and I was probably on a one way track to burning myself out. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's been a really cool, cool thing to you know, experience and go through. And, and that's why I love, I guess, that I have kind of, I feel like I've lived a few different lives within my life because I've done the, the whole fitness industry competing stuff. And, and then I've, you know, cut out food groups. So there was one coach there that told me to cut, not eat carbohydrates. So I did that for a period of time. And, you know, I've gone through, I've, I've had to go through those processes and then I've come out the other end and done my own studies and courses and, um, you know, what I do with my own life is what I share with my clients. It's not, uh, it's not, you know, something that I haven't trialed and tested myself. So 
when women come to me, I look at their food and they're eating 900 to 1,000 calories a day and I'm just like, you, it's not enough food. Women are under eating. They're constantly under eating and, and starving their bodies for nutrients. But because I've been there, I know how to relate to it. They're scared to eat food. They're scared to eat carbohydrates. So I coach them on, you know, all that sort of stuff and how to eat properly for fat loss and, and uh, that you can eat more and lose weight. But, you know, you've got to look after yourself, look after your metabolism and you've got to, you know, it's almost you've got to get back to that set point again and then work from there rather than always being in a deficit you're never going to be able to lose the weight continuously if you're always in a deficit sort of thing. So um, so I don't regret anything that I've done in the past. It's all been, you know, for a reason and it's all there so that I can coach other women and help, you know, women understand that there is a way out and you can live a healthy, a lot, you know, a healthy life, a balanced healthy life because I'll put my hand up. I drink red wine probably three or four nights a week, you know, like I love my red wine and I won't give it up. I won't give up that sort of, you know, stuff because that's something I enjoy doing. Like my coffee. I love my coffee. I'll never give up coffee. <laughs> uh, I don't yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't expect people to have to live like robots and cut the things out of their lives that they, they enjoy. Yeah. 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 I love it. So in terms of, you know, like post, post, post Leo and, you know, being able to accept the changes in your body and so forth, like what, what was it that kind of helped you through that? Was it, you know, um, I think change or, yeah, I, I just don't, I've, you know, and you know, you would know as soon as you lay eyes on your baby, it's like the love you feel and the love that they give you it just filled that void up that was inside of me that was this, I was on this, I was constantly either looking for validation from the outside world, not from within. And, and I never felt that sort of connection with any, any human. So to have that was just, I was just, I, and that's what's, you know, I'm going to get emotional because it's like amazing, but it, it was, it was like, it was such a massive wake up call for me because you know, my body created him, you know, and that's just it's such an amazing gift that women have. And, and, I always say this to women, I'm like, it's such a beautiful thing that that's what we're here to do. That's what we put on this planet to do is co-create. And um, I didn't think I was going to be a good mum. I didn't even know how to be a mum, but it's just blew me away straight away how I knew exactly what to do. Uh, and all he needed was me and all he wanted was me. And it, it just woke me up to what was real and what was important and what I needed. And, and from there, um, yeah, he's helped me grow into the, the person I am today. So, and he's only three and a half and he's my, he's, he's taught me so much about myself. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And yeah. so what's, what's been your, what's been your biggest challenge then over this kind of period of, of your whole experience and getting to, to now? Yeah. Uh, oh, biggest challenge. I think for me, um, is hmm, maybe just trying to get the balance right and i know it's a, a thing for everybody but it's you know trying to trying to work hard and I'm, I'm very entrepreneurial when i want to achieve something i set my mind out to it and i just kind of gun ho and do it but there is for me there is no off so you know i can be sitting on the couch doing something with leo and then I ha i'll just jump on the laptop or run back into the office and start emailing doing something i've had an idea i'll do that right. um and for me, I, I'm still constantly working on trying to switch off when I need to. Right. Um, uh, you know, when, when you're in a creative space, it's hard to go, oh, I'll, I'll do that later because you just want to do it now in case you forget. Because you can't, it's like inspiration. You can't kind of put that down and go, oh, I'll use you later. It's like, I've got to do it now. Otherwise, it, it's not coming from God, the place. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that's been a, a big, big challenge for me. Uh, and I guess just... Just what I mentioned before is that little bit of self-doubt um, that, that kind of creeps into my head from time to time. You know, am I good enough to be doing this? Do I know enough? Uh, and, you know, uh, it's, it's like, I guess, being in the industry for so long and, and having so many voices out there now and, you know, Instagram celebrities and, and girls that are, have come in, you know, and they're young and they've only been in the industry for a couple of years and, and yet people are kind of, you know, more inclined to go and, and follow them and their journey. And that's great because it's exciting or whatever, but I really do sometimes it took me a while to kind of peel away from that and be able to be vulnerable and be myself and accept that that was okay and that was enough for people to like me and the right people that want to follow my journey and get the advice from me will come in um you know and, it, and it's interesting because the women that always apply for my program are probably between the 
the ages of 30 to 50. So I know that there's that sort of millennial age group that are just, that won't even look twice at me because I'm, I'm beyond the body image now. It's like, you know, I don't put photos in my laundry, you know, like bras and G strings and I'm not going to do that on my Instagram. That's not what I'm about. It's about empowering and educating. And so there's a certain, you know, people that will go that way. And then there's people that will come over to me. Um, and, and yeah, and, and they're the ones that I really want to work with because they're in the right sort of headspace to, to be able to do the work that I do with my clients. So, um, so yeah, but I do, it, it's a very hard industry to kind of stay in all the time. You've just got like, for me, it's just been a massive journey of, um, staying true to myself, surrounding myself with the right people, trying not to let the, uh, the people that have, you know, are negative towards what I do or say nasty things affect me. Um, I used to be more sensitive than I am now. Now I'll probably just be like, you know, 10 minutes of like, why would they say that? And then I'm kind of over it, you know? Um, and then I just move on from it because um, I've had to do a lot of work on myself. And I guess the last year I see a healer uh, to work through my blocks and there's a massive fear around success. So as much as I want success, there's also a massive fear around it because what's going to happen you know, when I'm in that space, yeah. um, if I'm not ready to be in that space and I can't handle, you know, all of that stuff. So I've been working through all that sort of, you know, those things in the past year. Uh, and I think that's definitely helped me about to put my foot forward and, and my business is now the best it's ever been. Uh, and I'm feeling more confident around what I'm doing because I have been working through those blocks. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I think fear of success is a the common one out there, even just fear of yeah being and success could, you know, it means different things to different people and there's different levels of success and all the rest of it. Right. But we're so used to the status quo. We're so used to the norm. So even if you're, you know, like a little bit more successful than the people that you're, that you're with, that also can be intimidating. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, like world famous or anything, but so it's very prevalent out there. And, uh, because what happens is kind of like what you're saying, we, we can get hit down. I mean, the, the, you know, the Aussies are really good at it. Um, yeah. You know, tall poppy syndrome. So when anyone gets up there, you know, chop, chop them down and bring them back down to our level. So it's, it's, it's out there and it's, and it's massive. And it, it really does take a lot of strength and a lot of, you know, courage within mm. to, um, to face that and to really be a leader. And lead yeah. is that it's it's being able to stand out and and take take those kind of hits on the chin. Yeah, so, um, definitely. I, I yeah. really want to acknowledge you for that. It's oh yeah, I think it's always going to happen, and it's you do you kind of outgrow situations and people and you, you know, I, I'm a massive believer of people coming into your life at the right time. Uh, if you, you know, put it out to the universe, what you need it, it, and, and you're open to it, then it does, you know, it, uh, show itself, uh, because yeah, it's, it's definitely the case. Um, yeah, you do. I, I think the other thing is with me, I suppose, I, I've never changed who I am. I've, I've kept the core of who I am, the kind of free spirit, um, easygoing, uh, you know, I think I was a little bit of a hippie in one of my previous lives. Like I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of like airy fairy. I'm a bit of a dreamer. Um, and I love, I love freedom and I love all that sort of stuff as much as I've become a very direct, you know, sort of more masculine in, in my business and in what, what I do, but I'm very much that type of person. And I, and I'm, I always come back to that. And, um, and, I, you know, some of my friends, uh, they just like, when I walk, when I'm anywhere, I'm just me. I'm not anything better or higher. You know, I don't see the hierarchy like that. Yeah. But it's other people that aren't in the right space. I guess they see it and they're threatened by you, or they can't be happy for you because they're in a place where they're not happy with their lives, or you know yeah. they're not achieving their goals. Um, or they, some people are just happy just to kind of flip through life and not achieve goals, and then they kind of sit there and be like, you know, oh, but you know, and and I, I guess initially I had that to deal with because. Um, I found when I started out in the industry, I was very, I was kind of one of those annoying people that used to post a lot about being happy and positive. And I, I think it probably would have annoyed me <laughs> as well. But I know a lot of my, my Kiwi friends were like, oh my God, Jossie's too, she's too positive. Like, cause they just didn't get that. I was trying to create that space in my, and that mindset of that's, that's my, that was my path. And I, I was very much an overshare back then. I'm not so much now because I think um, I've just learned to keep a lot more to myself uh, but yeah, so I did go through a phase of that and having to deal with that. And, uh, and then I just had to ignore it because if I didn't go through that, 
I wouldn't be where I am today, you know? So you kind of got to, you kind of got to sit back and go, well, they're not in my life. They don't know what I'm like. I'm actually, you know, I'm still the same person. I'm just, I always choose to look on the bright side or the, you know, of life. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so that was, that's funny. I have funny conversations now when I go back to New Zealand and I, I just say to them, like, I laugh with them and go, I, I would have annoyed myself, like how positive I was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, like, but yeah, you, you know, that was just me at the time and I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I can't, I can't apologize for it. Um, yeah. I can just laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. And uh, what was I going to ask you next? Um, yeah. I was going to talk to a little bit kind of about the creativity you know, you're saying sometimes, you know, you get these moments of, you know, creative ideas or whatever. And I think that's, you know, we're quite similar entrepreneurial that happens all the time. Right. And what is it that you need to do to kind of nurture that, you know, the, to nurture that creative side of you? Yeah, I think you've got to, you've got to keep your, your, you know, kind of one foot down to stay in it, especially with an online business. There's lots of people out there that are trying to create um, income from home and, you know, uh, for me, it's been, um, like, you know, working with people. So having someone kind of driving me uh, and helping me with the tech, tech side of stuff uh, as well. You know, I'm best when I'm in front of people and I can talk to people. I've had to learn so much about technology since I've been working online. Uh, and I'm still, I, sometimes I'm still like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but I've got, a, I've got a girl who does, like, if I, I message her, she's like my virtual assistant. I'm like, can you please, like, log into ClickFunnels and sort that out for me? Because I think I've stuffed it up and she fixes it up for me and stuff. So, you know, I've had to do that. So, um, yeah, I guess it, it's just always been one, one step ahead. And now for being an online business, you need to create a sort of presence online. Uh, you know, and I think, I think this, the stats are someone needs to see you like 17 times before they will actually buy into what it is that you're doing. So yeah. you can't just kind of sell stuff. You can't go buy my stuff, buy my stuff, Hi, buy my program. Yeah. You've got to be like, you've actually got to help people and genuinely get them to know know you trust yeah. you give them, uh, and, give them value yeah and add value to their lives because yeah. it, it's a big deal stepping up and going hey i'm gonna I, I want you to coach me i'm choosing you it's a big deal so uh i think for me that's been something that i, I guess for me is you know like i do sometimes go oh god social media drives me nuts i've got instagram snapchat facebook you know um but but, but if I don't do it, I don't create that sort of friendship and, and that bond with my followers that I, that I need to and want to to help grow my business. So it's really important that I am consistent with that uh, and, and always just giving, giving, giving as much as I can. And then when I do, you know, say, okay, applications are open for my program, that's when people um, come in and want to work with me because they trust me and they know that I'm not going to rip them off and they know what my program's about and I've heard about it a few times. They've seen the results. They've heard from other women and that sort of stuff. So... It's just being consistent and um, like being vulnerable as well, being open to sharing, you know, the shit, sharing, you know, I did a post, oh, must have been a couple of months ago now, you know, um, of me with some cellulite on face, uh, Instagram and it, it got like the biggest, you know, amount of likes and comments. It's something I've done in ages and I was so nervous about doing it because it's so confronting. It's something that I don't like about myself and to put it out there, you know, I was like, but I just got such a good response from it. And I got messages constantly from ladies who just saying, thank you, thank you. Um, and so just every now and then it's just showing them a little bit of that as well, that, you know, I'm not superwoman, I'm not super mom. I'm, I'm you know, I, I, I have a crazy three and a half year old, you know, I don't, I have flaws, I have issues that sometimes I need to work around and with me with self-love and et cetera and all that sort of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, I think just, just, just yeah keeping it real like you've got to keep it real yeah uh, because you can only fake it when people say you can you can't you can only fake it for so long but i believe in karma and also believe in um you know people just you can see through the bullshit after a while you have like it if people are smart enough and yeah, totally and, and in our industry it's it's rampant there's so many people out there that will just want your money and won't give you the result that that you know that, that they're promising hmm. uh, so for me, it's just being consistent, being open, and being real. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And and so, what what keeps you going? Like, what what keeps your motivation up and your inspiration levels high when you when you need it? Uh, I think the, the the work that I do with my clients really inspires me. Seeing the changes in them, uh, and also the growth that I've had in the last say maybe six months to a year. Um, 2016 for me was a pretty tough year. I think I was going through a lot of 
uh, shifts within who I was and, you know, uh, like I'm a mum now. I didn't, I, and I was running a business, but I felt uh, like I was crumbling and drowning in it all and I had to really take a step back. And that's when I started working with someone and hired someone to help me with my business and kind of, you know, started to maybe surround myself with people that were starting to say more positive things and, and helping me to move forward rather than stay in that stuck position. Mm. Uh, but so I guess, you know, like when you start to see results in your business, you start to see, you know, opportunities present themselves, you know, like this year alone, I've had, um, you know, I've done a talk in Perth, I'm doing a talk in Melbourne, in November, I'm doing two, a talk in the, uh, at the Melbourne Expo in October, as well as the Brisbane Expo. So I'm having, like, I feel like my name is getting more and more out there, and people want to hear my message, and that, that really keeps me on track, it keeps me motivated, because that's that's where I'm at my best is and, and I see that stuff happening I'm like so I've got you know these these companies and expos and things wanting me to talk and that and, and people want to hear what I have to say and that, that that gets me excited because if I can reach out to one person in that talk and change their life or offer them you know then then I, it makes me feel like my job is done so yeah it's just that that momentum and when you're in that sort of state I guess you would understand it's like you know it just flows and it doesn't feel hard anymore. And then, yeah, it's like you just know you're in that in that right space. So uh, you just got to, when you're in that space, you just got to hold on to it and keep and keep that momentum and and the the the, the bigger focus. What's the bigger picture? And then the stuff in, in between just kind of happens, and that's what keeps me motivated. Good, awesome. So, what <laughs> advice? What advice have you got for you know people out there that are in the fitness industry or even not in any career that they're in and kind of don't really know what their next step is or how to get to kind of, you know, where perhaps you are or just get anywhere in their life. What, what advice would you give them? In regards to their career or their health or sort of? In regards to their career, kind of, you know, how you've been on this journey where you didn't know kind of that you're going to end up doing what you're doing now, yeah. but you've been able to create this over, you know, this period of time. I guess it, no, you know, you've got to have a vision and you've got to have a passion. That's the first thing. So if you want to help people, if that's, if that's your goal is you've got to start small and you've got to do the work and you've got to keep, I keep that vision alive. And, and, um, and, you know, my advice is to sort out help, you know, get, get someone that can help you create, um, what it is that you're trying to create an online business or, you know, because I think, you can't do everything on your own. Um, it's really overwhelming. It could be quite a long, a long process. If I'd known what I knew three years ago, three years, if I knew now, you know, I don't know, I could be a lot more successful than what I am now purely for the fact I think um, I tried to do a lot of it myself and it took a lot longer and it was a lot harder and I got stuck a lot more and I didn't have the right sort of support around me at the time. So uh, definitely get, getting support, getting help, guidance, having the vision and, um, you know, sometimes it's just like you've got to take that leap of faith because I believe that a lot of people work uh, you know, they're, they're just working and they're not living. They're not living their true purpose. They go to work, they come home. They don't have that sort of energy and passion and drive that, say, someone like you or I have, that, and, and they don't even know what that feels like. Um, and they're usually the ones that could be potentially overweight, stressed out, and quite negative towards people, you know, that are actually out there living on their true, into their true purpose. So yeah. uh, so if, if you are feeling like that, it's you've just got to take that leap of faith. You've got to take some risks. And um, I know a lot of mums these days, they want to be at home with their kids. You know, in Australia, childcare is so expensive. So, you know, it, it kind of doesn't help when if you have to go back to work and you're spending $500 a week on childcare and you're only getting paid, you know, like seven or $800 to go to work. Is it worth it? Like it's yeah. not it's just not worth it. And then you're missing out on spending time with your children as well. So there are a lot of mums and women out there nowadays who have become very entrepreneurial, who are trying to, you know, do that. Um, and I guess that, and, and that's really great to see that, you know, that's the vision is they want to be home with the kids and they want to create a business that they can step away from and still, you know, it can make money. They can take days off and it doesn't matter because they're still getting paid for it sort of thing. So, you know, that, that, you know, it really is a great way to be able to live your life on your terms. Like I haven't had a boss. Well, I haven't really had a boss for 10 years, you know, I've, I've just been doing my own thing. And so, you know, when I was a dental nurse and I used to hate sitting there next to the dentist and I was like, Felt like I was sitting next to my high school principal, you know, like just so close to them for eight hours a day. You, like they knew everything, like you couldn't even breathe without knowing. Yeah. And I've gone 
complete opposite because I was like, I cannot live like this. Like I cannot live like this. And I've never been told had a boss since, you know? Um, so so yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Love it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, that's great. Some real, really great, um, you know, bits of info there, which I'm sure people can tap into. And it's been beautiful just to hear your story and hear your journey and also just hear how, you know, authentic you are about what you do. And yeah, just to be able to have this conversation has been really special. Yeah. Thank you. No, thanks for having me. I'm, I, I love sharing my journey and in the hope that I can help people and it could be, you know, whether it's career orientated, whether it's health and fitness related, whether it's, you know, whatever it's, I think um, there needs to be more of it because we are, we, we sit back and we see the, the perfection and hear the, hear the highlight reels. We don't really see what goes on behind it. And, you know, for me, uh, I just, I just can't fake it. I, I, um, I'm very much in tune with my beliefs and my values and um, I, I I'm, I'm trying here to keep it real. There are there's some really great people in this world that are doing the best that they can and keeping it real. And, you know, and we're fighting that battle, but we will win the real yes. people. <laughs> <laughs> well, how can people, you know, find out more about your program and, and, and check you out, you know, find you on social media? Yeah, sure. So um, my website is www.fithealthymums.com. So, uh, that's one of my websites, or you can just go to justinswatala.com. That's S W I T A L A dot com. Uh, my Instagram is Justin underscore Fit Healthy Mum, and my yeah my Facebook page is just Justin Swatala. So uh, yeah, they can definitely I'm out there. Google me, and you'll find lots of uh, websites and um, you know my websites and Facebook and Instagram and all that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, awesome. Go and check her out. And uh, thanks again, babe. Really appreciate your time. And uh, so wonderful just to catch up. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Judy. I really appreciate it. (laughs) Yeah, you're welcome, babe. Talk soon. See ya.